Hey everyone, Andrew here, and today I'll be doing more work on my edge cube. Some of you may have heard me say this in previous videos, but what I want to do is a little, like, continue the mod to make it more stable. So, if you don't know, I did a video a very long time ago about an edge cube. It was back in April, I think. And it's definitely not up to my standards as of now. Like, there wasn't even any music or anything. But if you want to look at that video, you certainly can. But I'll just give you an overview. So, this is a Rubik's brand 3x3. And I took out all the corners and added stickers right here. So, it just solves like a 3x3, except you can ignore any step that involves edges. So it's just pretty unstable now, and it can pop if I just, I can just do this and the piece will just fall right out. So that's why I'm going to be cutting the corners to get internal pieces and try to make it more stable. So what I want to do is I want to take these pieces. These are the corners left over from the original Rubik's Cube. And yes, it is a Rubik's Cube. And I want to uh, cut right here. So I can keep this part and get rid of this part. And then I can put these little internal pieces in there. And I'm hoping, I'm not sure, but I'm hoping that that will make the cube more stable. I don't know how it's going to work. It might completely fail. But... There's no harm in trying, I can always take them out if they don't work. So, let's get started. Alright, so, I think I have a good setup. I found this saw that seems to cut the pieces pretty well. I have a piece clamped to the table. Hopefully all of the dust will go down into that container. And I also have the tripod set up there. Okay, let's get started. Alright, I finished the first one. So that definitely did not end the way I intended. Uh, the way it actually ended was, I was making the final cut, I didn't know it was the final cut, but I was making a cut, and then all of a sudden, this piece, it like, shot out of the clamp, went flying across the room, and then it landed and split like this upon impact. Let's try it out in the cube. Can you imagine how bad this would look if I was filming it on my old camera? It would be so blurry doing a close-up like this. This new camera is still awesome. Okay, so I was trying to clamp in the second piece, and then, again, it shot out of the clamp and went flying across the room, but this time it split apart in a different way. It actually came apart like this. I've never seen a Rubik's brand do this before. So, interesting. Anyways, I'm gonna try to find a different clamp, because this one is way too tight. So I found this one. Hopefully it'll work. Let's try to put it on. Okay, I did get it to work. Hopefully this one will be a lot better than the other one. And I also had to put a towel down to prevent it from damaging the table. Anyways, let's continue cutting. Okay, I got the second one done. This is what, the internal pieces are here and here, and this one definitely feels more stable than this. You can see I can move this quite a bit further than I can move this one. So that's definitely good. That's a good sign. I think that the internal pieces will help significantly. Let's continue on and do the third piece.
All right, fourth one's done. So let's put this in the cube. So right here. All right, so now all four of these all have internal pieces and none of these do. So if we test the green layer versus the blue layer, Okay. Hmm. Well, the blue layer is definitely smoother. This layer just has some weird catching. I don't know how that's possible. The stability definitely has improved. See, I can do that with no internal pieces and not even close with internal pieces. Okay. So the, the turning quality is worse. But the stability is better. Alright, time to do the fifth one. Alright, piece number five, now complete. So, let's put this in. Whoa! Okay. That was really weird. This cube has never ever popped when I'm just turning it before. And suddenly it pops with internal pieces. That's not a good sign. Alright, let's just keep going and cut off piece number, what are we on now? Six, I think? Yeah, six. Okay, the eighth internal piece is now done. I'll put it in the puzzle and see how it performs. Okay, so I will be lubricating it with this stuff, which actually works surprisingly well. So if you have a non-WCA puzzle that turns really awfully and you don't want to waste real lube on it, this is the way to go. So, let's just put a little bit in. Okay. So, I broke the lube in, and there's a massive improvement. This turns so much better now. I can, like, easily finger trick it. It's still Rubik's brand, so it's not ever going to be actually good. But, considering it's a Rubik's brand, this is very good. So, that is it for my Edge Cube mod. So, I figured that you guys would want to see a solve of this puzzle. One thing that I think is kind of weird is that it is very stable now compared to before. That pop was weird. It does not feel like it will pop at all now. So, just hand scramble I think is fine for this situation. Okay. Okay, 
37.49. Look at this camera. My old camera wouldn't be able to even really show the time on a stack mat timer, but anyways, um, so definitely much slower than an average 3x3 solve for me. Normal 3x3 solves take me around 28 seconds, 27 usually. And I think the only reason this took longer is because it definitely does not turn as well. Even with the internal pieces and after being lubricated, it's still a Rubik's brand, so it can't even come close to the turning quality of a speed cube. Edge cube part two is now complete. My edge cube is more stable and it turns better. I don't know what my next video will be. Well, let me rephrase that. I do know what my next video will be, but you won't see it for a really long time. Next video that you actually see, I don't know what that video will be. So, thank you so much for watching this video. Goodbye.